let me start by conveying apologies from Minister Siti Nurbaya, who had planned to be here but has unfortunately had to travel outside the city this morning. Um, she sends her sincere apologies and uh, wish all of us a great conference. Um, which gives me some more time for my opening remarks. Uh, one month ago, the C4 board went to visit the peatlands in central Kalimantan. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the uh, community representatives for their hospitality and for sharing their experiences and concerns. Among others, we met with Bapak Ahmad, who is also here today and will speak in the next session. We're all impressed by the determination, responsible action, and innovation by local communities to restore peatlands and to build a better future. Um, we should all do what we can to help and make sure that science, policies, and experts support the efforts of local people. And that's why we're here at the Global Landscapes Forum today. Let me say a few words, a few additional words on the Global Landscapes Forum and this particular one, which is called Peatlands Matter. We have participants from across Indonesia and from across the globe. Welcome to all of you. We also have participants joining via live stream and of course through various social media channels. And we have a full day ahead. We have an opening plenary with the community challenges, aspirations and expe expectations. We have a round table where we want to share lessons and solutions from peatlands around the world. And we have science sessions, national breakout sessions, landscape labs, exhibitions, etc. It's all in your program. So, so it, it's going to be a great uh, and interesting day, I think. This is also the first Global Landscapes Forum to be held in Indonesia. And it's also the first Global Landscapes Forum in our next phase. And this GLF, as we call it, even if we shouldn't use acronyms too much. The GLF platform is expanding, both in scope and in reach. And of course, we, we do this because we believe firmly that sustainable landscapes are crucial for achieving the sustainable development goals. And when we deal with sustainable landscapes, we want to put people and local communities at the center. And for that reason, the GLF going forward will have four components. We will address learning, we will address outreach, we will have dialogues such as this one, and we will have a knowledge platform. And this all comes together in our aim, together with many, many partners, to establish a community of practice, a movement, if you like, that engages a billion people over the next five years. That, of course, includes all of you. Now, turning to peatlands, topic of today. Peatlands have often been important for development and livelihoods. And I can, I can reflect on, on my own country, Sweden, where we have used to drain peatlands for a long time for smallholder agriculture and also for forest production. And then Anne-Sophie and I remember from our time in Italy when we traveled across huge peatlands that have been drained for food production over the past 100 years or so. So peatlands have always been an important resource, which is also why we've seen large-scale policies on peatland development in this country in the past. But these days, now we seem mainly to talk about carbon when we discuss peatlands. When we had the haze crisis in 2015, we were only a few months ahead of the Paris climate negotiations. And of course, the focus was on the climate issues. And the media, particularly in the north, talked about emissions from the land fires in Indonesia. They also talked about the wildlife, and they also talked about the delay of the Formula One race in Singapore. But at the same time, the communities were suffering from economic losses, from illness, from, even from deaths. And now when the uh, media, the attention in media has all but disappeared, communities continue to struggle with the consequences. 
And still, we often use the climate argument first. Fair enough. The climate argument gives us a higher profile and a political momentum for action at, on the international scene. And it is an important issue, no doubt about that. But I think it's time to calibrate this discussion. And I believe that the local perspective is key for that. When we put people first, then we can make progress for the climate as well. The reverse order is probably not desirable or even possible. So today is about exploring challenges, frustrations, and roadblocks, but also more to identify opportunities for collaboration, for actions and solutions. And I'd like us all to reflect on what those opportunities are and who they are for. Who will benefit from the, today's deliberations? This is also why this conference today will start with the perspectives and the challenges and the aspirations of the local community representatives. We'll see a short film from Central Kalimantan after, after my introduction and then turn to the first panel to learn more. And I think it would be good for all of us to reflect on this. What are we doing and how does it help? So thank you for joining us today. I look forward to a most interesting conference. And by that, I will conclude and we will turn to the video that will be shown. I'm not, I'm not sure if we will say something in between, but that's all from my side. Again, a warm welcome and I look forward to today's deliberations. Thank you. <laughs>